we start this morning at the southern border as Title 42 is set to expire tonight. All day long at the border wall, record numbers of migrants are apprehended, searched, and loaded into vans. There is great concern this will intensify. Hi, welcome to About That. I'm Lauren Bird, in for Andrew Chang. After more than three years, a controversial American immigration policy expires today. Cities along the U.S.-Mexico border are preparing for the end of Title 42. The end of the policy is expected to lead to a sudden increase of migrants at the borders. There's a high level of uncertainty among migrants. The people that are on the Mexican side of the border, some of them are choosing to stay and wait, and some of them are choosing to know, let's go now, because we don't know if it's going to get worse. Title 42 basically allows U.S. authorities to expel asylum seekers from American soil, circumventing standard U.S. immigration law on the grounds that asylum seekers present a public health risk. It was put in place by the CDC under then-President Donald Trump at the beginning of the pandemic. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has decided to exercise its authority under the Title 42 of the U.S. Code to give Customs and Border Protection the tools it needs to prevent the transmission of the virus. By mid-June, the ACLU and other organizations had filed lawsuits challenging it, arguing that Title 42 was just a pretext to keep immigrants out of the U.S. So fast forward to November 2020, and Joe Biden is elected. We did it. We did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> Title 42 continued under the Biden administration, and so did the controversy around it, as images of camps at the border spread and the number of migrants expelled climbed. But then... The president taking a significant and symbolic step into a post-pandemic world. The White House is just now saying that the president has just signed a bill that will end the national emergency declared during the COVID pandemic. In April, Biden signed a bill ending the U.S. national emergency over COVID-19. And that means the public health basis for Title 42 is no longer there. Since the policy began, it has been used to expel roughly 2.8 million people. The expulsions themselves moved fast. Routine removals under immigration law typically take you know, more paperwork, more time, like 90 minutes. But under Title 42, they could reportedly take as little as 15 minutes. And the shorter procedure meant people tried to re-enter the country more often. According to U.S. Border Patrol officials, it caused a spike in repeat attempts, with migrants trying to cross the border multiple times a day. And that's because it didn't bother with the usual deterrence, like fines and prosecution and other penalties. People have already begun crossing into the U.S. border towns, anticipating the end of the policy. Three cities in Texas have declared a state of emergency. President Biden ordered 1,500 troops to help at the border last week. But even so, officials say they are bracing for an influx of migrants. We are clear-eyed about the challenges we are likely to face in the days and weeks ahead, which have the potential to be very difficult. Our plan will deliver results, but it will take time for those results to be fully realized. I spent uh, a, close to an hour with, uh, with the Mexican president today. Uh, we're doing all we can. It's going to be chaotic for a while. The U.S. government is expecting as many as 13,000 migrants every day just after Title 42 expires. And that's up from 5,000 in March during Title 42. Some of them will likely eventually end up here in El Paso, already in a state of emergency. Thousands of migrants now sleeping in downtown streets. We've crossed jungles, deserts, rivers, and borders, Beckenbauer Franco tells me. He spent months traveling here with 20 other Venezuelans, now worried if they show up for processing, they'll be turned back. All these people here, I just asked them who here is going to ask for asylum. There are a couple reasons why we're expecting to see a spike in the number of migrants trying to cross the border. In order to understand that and what may happen next, I'm chatting with Maria Sacchetti. She's an immigration reporter for The Washington Post. Hi, Maria. Hello. So Title 42 expires at midnight. So what is going to happen then? Well, then the United States government will return to Title 8, which is the nation's immigration laws, how they used to enforce them before the pandemic took effect and the Trump administration 
close the borders. So, um, but there's going to be an important change, um, that one that the United States hopes, the Biden administration hopes will last just a couple of years, where it's not going to be as easy to seek asylum. People who claim asylum will, uh, and if they, after they pass through another country on the way to the United States, will have what the Biden administration is calling a rebuttable presumption uh, of ineligibility for that protection. And that means that, in, in plain language, that if they pass through another country, then they should have sought asylum there. And, uh, and if they reach the U.S.-Mexico border and try to seek asylum in the United States, they're going to be presumed ineligible and they could be deported to Mexico or to their home country. And what's the purpose of bringing in those changes? Well, the United States government is expecting a, a huge influx of, of migrants. Uh, and and it's, under the pand during the pandemic, they were able, they, the federal government was able to very quickly expel migrants to Mexico. That took as, as little as 15 minutes. Um, when they're now they're returning to regular immigration processing, but that could take much longer. And so to try to control the influx and prevent a lot of people coming to the border to seek asylum, whether they're eligible for it or not, as a way to get into the country, um, officials say they need something short term to manage that. And this is what they've come up with, a way to, to say, look, if you've caught, crossed through another country on your way here and you haven't applied for any any of the other um, uh, any of the other lawful ways into the United States uh, through an app or in other ways, then you're not going to you're just not going to get in. It's not going to be as easy to do that. Right. And the app is part of it's one of those new measures the Biden administration has brought in. Am I right? Right. I mean, the Biden administration is basically saying, you know, we're in the United States is a nation of immigrants and a nation of laws. And, and so they're, they're saying they're going to enforce the border. People who are not eligible to come to this country, you know, if you cross the border illegally, it is not going to be easy for you to get in if you uh, claim asylum. Because in past years, people would claim asylum. Sometimes those cases would be decided quickly. But more recently, they've been placed into these huge backlogs and years long court cases. So the Biden administration has come up with what it calls a compromise. They're going to create lawful pathways for people to seek asylum or get a sponsor to bring them to the United States to, if they're from one of four countries, Venezuela, Cuba, Haiti, or Nicaragua. And, and then they'll, you know, the hope is that they'll come in through a port of entry or they'll come in through an airport and avoid crossing the border illegally entirely. Um, but then if you do cross the border illegally, uh, there, there could be some exceptions if you have an extremely compelling case. But for the most part, uh, if you seek asylum, you're going to be presumed ineligible if you could have sought it in Mexico or another country. Um, and you're going to need to be deported quickly. And under the expulsion policies, the Title 42 policies, there weren't consequences for crossing multiple times. Mm -hmm. Under the Title 8 system, there are consequences and have been for a long time. So what's this going to mean for the thousands of people that are there on the border now? Well, there are a lot of questions. I mean, it's, it's really unclear. We don't know how many people will be granted exceptions. We don't know if there's, uh, if there's some real concern uh, in the federal government that people are getting misinformation. People uh, are often guided by smugglers or uh, their own relatives who managed to get in or... Uh, or YouTube and TikTok, you know, things that um, people post on those platforms. And, uh, and they're, you know, they and people uh, in a lot of cases have sold everything they have. So they feel that they cannot go home. Um, so it's there. It's a big question mark right now. Absolutely. OK, well, we will be watching Maria Sacchetti. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.